In this video, I'm going to go over some of the most common ways to make and use a stencil. There are a lot of materials you can use, such as cardstock, craft paper, or acetate, but any water-resistant, easy-to-cut surface will work. First, you need to mark out your design, which you can do by drawing it out yourself or tracing from an existing pattern. Another option is to print it directly onto your stencil material. Once your pattern has been cut out, you have to make registration marks, and registration marks are basically any mark that will help you keep your design centered and repeat the design accurately. When you're making a stencil from any sort of paper, it's really important to make it last as long as possible. One way to do that is to shellac your paper, and this could be on the cardstock or even on the craft paper. These paper stencils will not last long, but they'll last longer because the shellac provides a sort of waterproofing that will help it be a little bit more durable. Another option to protect your paper is packing tape. You should cover the entire surface front and back with the tape slightly overlapping, and make sure to press down the tape well. Then you can cut out your design. Paint or water will eventually seep under the tape, but it should last a fair number of repeats. For this video, I am doing a layered stencil, so I made each stencil the same size and used the same registration marks so that they would line up accurately. Usually a pretty solid choice for your registration marks is the center lines, like what I'm doing, but it depends on the size and design. It might be a better idea for you to have a portion of the next repeat on the stencil so you can line up the next repeat according to that. When you are ready to use your stencil, you need to give yourself some guidelines. Because I am working on such a small scale, I gave myself a center line for each repeat, but when working on a huge wall for a set, you'll want to give yourself a few marks or snap lines so that you can make sure you are still repeating correctly. Applying paint with a roller can be tricky because if you have too much paint, it will get under the stencil, but if you have too little paint, you'll push too hard and the paint will still seep under the stencil, which is the mistake that I made. It's a fine balance when you're using a roller, but it makes up for its trickiness with speed. If your stencil is large enough, another fast option is a sprayer, which I'm not able to demonstrate. Your paint should be fairly thick so that it does not seep under the stencil. There are specific stippling brushes meant for stenciling, but any brush with thick, stiff bristles will work well because you apply the paint in a dabbing motion. You should not brush back and forth because that will force paint under the stencil and the repeat won't be clean. You should also be sure to dab off excess paint before applying to the stencil. Applying with a sponge is similar to a brush. You want to avoid any wiping motion so that the paint does not get under the stencil. Also be sure that you have wrung out any excess water from your sponge so that it does not water down your paint. Another stencil tip is to make sure you are frequently cleaning off the front and back of your stencil with a rag, and be sure to give it a proper wash after use so that paint does not build up and start to clog your stencil. 